Hello teachers, I'm Mary and today I'm here for the second part of engaging topics for your lesson. If you haven't watched the other video yet, go and do it. But no, you know, watch this video first. No judgments, okay, on part one, because I didn't know how to edit video. So I think the video was a bit uh, repetitive and maybe not very dynamic, but topics are great though. Right, so the point is, if you're a teacher, you know, especially an independent teacher, you know that we have to be very, like, very, very, very creative, you know, to come up with different topics to engage our students. Yeah, to be honest, I think all topics can be interesting, you know, so it depends on your creativity, it depends on your ability to ask the right questions, you know, to um, come up with nice fun activities that are going to motivate people so i've talked to my students about blood donation or gravity you know loads of topics that are not very let's say common and they loved it you know because of the type of activities so i'm going to share my screen with you and i'm going to show you three topics that i really love using right so i'm going to show you the topics and the activities possible activities that you can do Okay, so the first one, I don't know about your students, but my students, when I tell them we are going to study geography, they get a bit upset. <laughs> You know, they they really they don't like it. You know, most of my students don't like geography. So I try to show them there are loads of different things about geography. It's not just about knowing capitals, you know, and this kind of stuff. So I call this topic how how well do you know the earth? So um, there are loads of things we can do. So for example, I can start the lesson with a quiz. You know, this is a bit um I'm challenging, you know, they really like to be challenged. So well, which is the highest capital city in the world so this is a nice quiz you know with curious um things about different places and we can go and talk together about it we can talk about the pronunciation we can talk about intonation we can talk about grammar we can talk about everything using this topic so this activity for example is a very nice one there is a quiz which is the planet's longest river you know so you can give them the clues if they have got no idea so you can tell them well it's in africa it's a country with the pyramid you know like -na 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 -na. so basically you can help them and for sure they're going to say wow that's nice you know i haven't i haven't thought of it or i don't know this kind of stuff and this brings like a very nice atmosphere to the class and they really like it another activity um that we can do is to talk about cities built from scratch you know there are loads of cities around the world that they are they, they didn't exist you know so we've got for example las vegas or dubai or canberra you know the capital of australia Australia. We've got Brasilia in Brazil, which is the, um, the capital at the moment. So um, there are loads of places. And this is actually very interesting because most of those places, you know, they were deserts. And there is a reason why people decided to create a city in that place. So we can do, we can talk about it, you know, what would be the reasons for a country to, to build a city? Or um, do you think, you know, uh, it would be nice to create a new city with technology? So you can ask questions. You can use this as a warm-up for example then you can go into a reading so look let's talk about the capital of australia why is kimbra because most people think sydney is the capital so yeah actually there was like a rivalry between sydney and melbourne and to solve you know to sort this problem out they decided to create a capital so um, again you know you see you, you we've got a text here so the student can read aloud and then we can go you know you can highlight um the mistakes you know to just not to interrupt up the students so you highlight the mistakes the pronunciation mistakes you can go and ask vocabulary so um do you know what i don't know maybe shapes you know the word shapes or we are talking here about the commonwealth have you got an idea what, what is the commonwealth what countries are part of commonwealth then there are loads of things you know so brasilia for example as well this one is one of my favorite activities so we talk about um very not strange but weird places or places that look impossible you know i mean this this doesn't really um, seem like a real place and this is actually a real place in Mauritius you know so the underwater waterfall so um, you can talk about these places you can ask the students if they've been to a place like there you know have you been to any very strange place I know for example in Colombia they've got a river that is colorful or in Australia they've got a river that is pink uh, a lake that is pink so look at this one this is amazing the Dar Vaza I don't even know how to say it crater in Turkmenistan so 
this is like the door to hell. So you can ask students if they like, you know, these kind of places, if they would like to go to a place like that, or if they are afraid of it. So you see, you can work on uh, speaking and at the same time things are going to come up and as always emerging emerging language and to challenge the student you know so where do you think this place is Turkmenistan do you know this place so you can just close your slides go to google go to the maps you know show the place to the student you know you can talk about a, a bit about geography you know another thing that we can do um, is to talk about natural disasters, right? So this is part of geography as well. So usually I talk about um, weather with students that are basic. So we start with, well, tornado, hurricane. I still don't know the difference between a hurricane and a tornado and a twister. I've looked for it, but really I, I can't remember. But this can be homework for the student, you see. So can you tell me, you know, can you look into the difference in among tornado, cyclone, twister and hurricane, for example, a fire? When when it, it is considered a bush fire you know so for example last year in australia they we, we had like um a bush fire it started to kill loads of animals you know so can we look into the news you know and bring this information to me and explain to me what happened and how how it ended you see or um, i don't know maybe you can talk about tsunamis if the student lives in a country for example myanmar you know burma um i know there are loads of natural disasters happening there so if the student is from like a place with this kind of disasters you can ask them to explain to you so are you afraid of this kind of, of thing so if there is um, an earthquake do you know how to deal with that what what do you have to do so um, there is a listening that i use in these lessons as well so i've put in the link here so look if i click on the link there is a channel on youtube and it's called the weather channel so it's very very nice because they work with well let's just wait for the, the ads to go so they work with imr which is like immersive reality so you can feel how people feel when they are in the middle of a disaster so this one for example let's just keep out here uh, sorry channel so look basically we can see how people feel when they are in the situation so look this guy is going to explain things about a flash flooding and we can see the water rising here la 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 yeah and there are, there are loads of, of episodes, you know, with different types of disasters. And you can use these. They are very short videos, so they're amazing for lessons. And you can just tell the student, okay, we are going to watch this together. Um, I've got three questions. Obviously, you have to watch the video before, you know, and, and try to, to make up some questions. This is one listening, but obviously there are loads of um, YouTube, oh, Jesus, YouTube channels um, talking about the weather, you know, on YouTube. So you can just go choose one, as I already recommended, you know, in one of my videos i don't really use videos that are more than four minutes in a lesson because it feels like a bit of waste of time you know you hear both of you just watching the video you know while you could be doing something more productive let's say so this is um receptive skill so you can if it's longer just tell the student you know send the videos before watch this video we, we are going to discuss in class what else we've got here okay let me open my full screen going to nationalities this is another nice thing you know so you can go through the nationalities there is another video that i would recommend so i always try to put you know the videos the links on my slides so i don't have to be looking for the video so this one is a bit funny you know the name is can you name a country and basically they went to the streets you know then the, this tv program is from the united states they went to the, the streets and they were asking people they showed people a map and they were asking people if they could name a country right is it as, as easy as that you know just look at them up and name a country and it was a bit embarrassing you know because people could not even know you know where the united states were <laughs> so you can watch this with your student you can ask the students okay try to um write down you know take notes of the names of the countries that you hear so you watch together again it's a short video look it's about three minutes three minutes and a half and then you can discuss how good people are um, how, how good a geography people are in your country, you know, so at the moment I'm living in Spain. So is geography a big thing here? You know, do you really learn things when you are at school? Right. So going back here, another thing that I use for geography is guessing the nationality. 
you know, so I just take photos of famous people. So I try to mix a bit of backgrounds, you know, actresses or singers or politicians, you know, just maybe your student is a business student, you know, who's studying business. So maybe you're just going to choose um, personalities that are related to business or if they are very, if they are into sports, you can choose personalities, you know, celebrities that are um players, you know, football players, basketball players, for example. So in this case, I just took like random, random photos. And it's funny because these people, people, most people don't know where they are from. So they would say, well, American, maybe, well, she's an actress, she's American. And actually their nationalities are very, uh, not exotic, that's not the word, but they are not what people might expect. It gives food for thought, you know, so basically it gives the students um, the opportunity to talk about a variety of things. Do you know this lady? Oh, she's a, yeah, she's an actress. Have you seen any of her videos? What, any of her, her, her movies, you know, which one do you like? What's your favorite film? Or this girl, well, she's a singer. What type of music does she sing? So you can adapt all these activities. This is the beauty of it. All these activities can be adapted to different levels, you know, because everything depends on the questions you're going to ask them, right? So, yes, I mean, these are just some examples, you know, obviously you can look into your own material. You can look, if you go to Google, you know, there are loads of very interesting things. But what I recommend, you know, for to really, to really engage students is to look at topics from a different point of view you know not the very basic thing that they have at school and they get really really bored like okay let's all talk about the capitals or let's all talk about you know the currency what's the currency of this country you know these things that they have to memorize no so to to make a topic engaging you really have to stimulate critical thinking you know you really want your students to think about the topic so there is a variety of things so if they like geopolitical for example it's amazing you know because you can discuss uh, topics i wouldn't recommend to go into politics obviously you know for obvious reasons but maybe you can talk about um Geopolitic, you know, the situation of this country. Have you seen, you know, the war there? Unfortunately, there is a war or a civil war or in this country, you know, this country has um, problems with the another one. So you can discuss news together. You can just go to BBC and um, take some of the news, discuss the news, you know. So this obviously is more for advanced students, but you can, you know, level your lesson and you don't have to be preparing loads of different activities to different students. Yeah, so the second topic I would recommend you to talk about is astrology. So remember, the students don't have to believe in astrology to talk about it. You know, most people, they know, they have something to say about the topic. So they at least know the zodiac, the zodiac sign, or if they are Asian, if you if it's like Chinese culture, you know, they do have their own astrology. And But basically, everyone has something, you know. So if they don't even know their sign, you can just go and show them, you know, the signs that you've got. And well that we that there exists you know so well when, when is your birthday right so it is the 21st of june so wow you're cancer so what are the characteristics what are the features of design and the person can try to guess if they don't know some people they love the topic and they're going to say well cancer yeah we are very romantic and we love our family and we are very sensitive people but some people they just say ah, i've got no idea you know i don't care about this type of stuff so basically Basically, you are going to say some stuff that you know or you don't. I mean, it's just it's just um to practice, you know, it's not really right and wrong because these things obviously we don't know if they're right or wrong. So this could be the first activity to talk about the dates, you know, especially if you are talking about ordinal numbers, you know, if they don't know how to pronounce dates, you know, first and second and fifth and this kind of stuff. So you can go through the months of the year as well. And then there are lots of activities that you can do. So one thing, for example, is just a reading. Both of you, you are going to read, the student is going to read aloud. You're going to discuss the text. So um, there are 12 zodiac signs. So apparently there is one extra now, one one more, right? A new one. Um, but yeah, so you can read this. Again, you can go and, and look into the pronunciation, vocabulary, you know, the same as always. You can use this text um, as you like, you know, as you wish, because there are loads of things that come, come up from this thing, right? From this type of, of reading. Uh, reading together so another thing that you can do is you know to show them some like nice fun stats 
So, for example, two signs rule the presidency. So, apparently, Scorpio and Pisces are, you know, they they pop up more often, you know, than other any other sign when it comes to to people um, presidents, you know, to, to people in presidency. And um, so, this is like an interesting, well, a bit useless, but it is like a fun fact about signs. So, what 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 are your thoughts on this? So, you can have this discussion, very nice one, you know, very light. You are not talking about something very serious and heavy so look the most common birthday is in september or a few signs are the most money so apparently scorpio leo cancer and taurus are the ones that are more likely to earn more money and i'm leo by the way and this yeah it's not working for me but maybe one day <laughs> so yeah we have to be hopeful um and then we can do some guessing zodiac signs so again you just choose some photos of personalities you know celebrities or um, as i said if you know they um the students have any special interest you know so they want to see singers or they want to see you know players you can just choose these type of photos and they are going to try to guess the sign together with you so uh actually i don't really remember the sign of these these people but yes you can do in you can just do it together the another thing that i really like is there is a channel on youtube so if you click on the link right you're going to be able to see the video and the name of i, I don't know if it's a channel yet yeah, channel is cut and the name of the video is guess my zodiac sign lineup so there are several videos you know saying you know saying exactly the same exactly the same videos but with different people so it's very nice it's a long one so i would recommend you to send it to your student right so you don't really um spend a lot of your class time you know on, on this so just send to them there are lots of people and there is a person that is um going to predict to predict you no know, to guess to guess their sign so the, this person is going to talk to people you know individually so they are going to come and um, people are going to come to him and they're going to ask do you like singing or do you like or are you very bossy you know like random questions and they are going to give a badge to the person with the sign that they think is the right one so it is nice you know because you really engage it's, again it's not something you know very serious but it's really nice because you really pay attention to the questions especially if you are talking about um the, the formation of questions you know so how can you make questions in english and the, the intonation in questions and this kind of stuff so your students really are going to engage and try to guess and they, wow no this girl probably i thought she was virgo you know and probably and, and actually she's capricorn so yes and then especially with more advanced students you can try to do the horoscope prediction so here you've got i don't even know this is gemini this is taurus this is leo this is cancer no this is scorpio and okay so you student you are going to give me the prediction so um we can work on future or we can we can work on conditionals you know so if you do this this is going to happen or um you will find your love you will find a good job again there are loads of other things that you can do but these are just some of you know some of my ideas otherwise this video is going to be one hour and a half Right. Yeah, and the last topic that I want to talk about today is strange hobbies. Right, so I know that most teachers talk about hobbies with students, especially if they are basic students, but I'm talking about taking this topic to another level. You know, I'm not going to be talking about reading, watching TV, and these very basic things. We are going to be talking about serious stuff. Right, so um, obviously we can start with normal hobbies, right? So there's a bit of vocabulary. Not all students are going to know, for example, or sewing is or ballet journaling or maybe oh, i don't know pottery or jigsaw puzzles so first thing is a warm-up you can go through these 20 um hobbies ask the students you know to describe their hobbies and these very basic stuff that we we usually do right so what well, um, what do you think about dog sitting you know have you have you tried you know training your dog or knitting or crochet what well, is there anyone in your family doing this so this very you know um well-known things that we always do and then we can start talking about strange things so for example train surfing in germany so look i've got a photo there to make an impact and also i've got um a text so again we can read the text together we can discuss you know we can discuss the photo the photo um a thing that i really like is description of photos because this is very common you know for cambridge or um, 
and different exams, you know, APTIS from British Council. So I really like people describing photos. We can talk about loads of stuff regarding vocabulary. So um, try surfing. And then I've got two photos there. You can do exactly as they do on um, Cam the Cambridge exam, you know. So there are two photos. I wanted to compare these two photos and ask questions about them. So um, do you think they are doing this for the same, with the same intention? Or uh, what do you think, wh where do you think they are going, the first one? And what is the second? guy doing so obviously the first one they're going to work or they are commuting you know so they are they are going to study or something like that while you're in the second photo the guy is just doing this for fun it's very dangerous it's not nice at all but as you can see the train is not is still you know it's not it's not moving so this kind of stuff right so this gives you can use this as a warm-up or this can take a lesson you know it depends it depends on you and what you are going to ask so I've got others for example tattooing vehicles in Taiwan that's a very nice one I love it um, so can you describe this car? Do you have a car? Does your father have uh, have a car? Your mother? You know what type of what type of cars do you like? And you can go from there, and there is like an infinity of things that you can ask them about. You know cars and these kind of, of hobbies. I love this one. It's in William Bryce. Yeah, this is for a good cause. Apparently, this is like a voluntary volunteering thing that she does to help people with cancer. So very nice one. So if your student is into these kind of things, for example, you can just go and open the website. You know, there is a website talking about this and you can go there check you know how can help how they can help and you know to see this beautiful um thing that this lady is doing hot topic and nice one all right then obviously we can always use listenings or videos you know well videos are listening but they are watching so this is a listening so it's just the audio you know the audio itself there's no image so this one is from the british council is a short audio about pottery and then there are the questions so this is another thing that i can suggest you to do you know go to the british council website they've got plenty of very good lessons you know they are ready to use so they give you the exercise they give you um the questions you just have to copy and paste from your slides and then you can check the answers as well or you can send the answers to the student you can send the transcript to the student right so amazing very very good one and this is just a true and false you can discuss the topic you can talk about it and that's it and obviously you can do a bit of um reading together um for example these are very strange let's say things so tree shaping what do you think so before reading you know so you can even go and just cover this so students don't see it so you can go and say well what do you think we are going to be talking about bit of fighting news reading what that is that you know so um you can ask them again critical thinking so there is a channel that i would recommend but uh to be honest um be careful with sensitive students because it's a bit intense um to not say you know uh, other things so the name is strange addictions so there are loads of very very weird things sometimes i doubt they are true i don't really know but i i don't think they are true I, I don't know actually but it's nice um for them to watch by themselves you know so same days as a homework so very strange hobbies and very strange habits and very strange addictions you know these things all related so um, as you can see you know all of these they are topics that they are not really useful if the person is starting business or if it's a child, obviously you're not going to show these kind of weird things to children, but you can adapt. You know, when you can have the main goal of this, you know, the topics, the main goal for this video I'm making is to engage people, you know, so they can really talk, they can speak up, they can really uh, practice, right, to improve their level of speaking, okay? So that's it for today, beautiful human beings. Now I give you the permission, go and check my another video about engaging topics and the other videos as well, you know, loads of videos about speaking activities, writing activities, loads of activities and tips and suggestions recommendations for you that are an English teacher well or a language teacher because you can adopt my ideas from another language as well okay so subscribe to my channel give me a thumbs up and thanks a lot happy teaching